One thing, it, it, after 22 uh, years uh, and several trips back to Vietnam uh, to visit uh, uh, writers and poets and artists and filmmakers and, and guys that run hotels and you know guys that run trains. I'm a train buff, so hanging out with uh, Vietnamese train guys was a great kick. Uh, and that's about it. But, uh, this stuff will be on the final. <laughs> so, so, so write, write some of this down. Because uh, if I say it, it cannot. This was in Dublin. Uh, this would be a pint of single malt scotch. Oh, uh, yeah. Which I think is a very civilized way to conduct a reading. But since this is not Dublin, we'll have to make do with. Uh, I think this is Sprite. There's some sandwiches left and stuff. But let's just talk. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'll start it then. Yes. This is part of the trilogy, yes? Yes, ma'am. This is the first book, the second book in what I refer to, uh, uh, and I can only refer to it in this way, as an accidental trilogy. I didn't mean to write three books about the war. Uh, uh, Sometimes a writer I wrote about Vietnam basically for 30 years. And uh, 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 readings like this are exceedingly rare. Because I'm just, I finally wore myself out talking about it. Uh, I'd much prefer to talk about the mystery novel or the Vietnamese folk tales, which are, they're folk tales, uh, not about the war. But yeah, uh, three books, yeah, so by accident. What links them other than... Ma'am? What links them other than the subject of the Vietnam War? That's it. It's the subject. Yeah. It's uh, 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 not personal experience, uh, mm -hmm. not... Uh, uh, I think if anything uh, links the books, it's sort of a... a a 30-year lingering uh, pissed off this. I, uh, when I got back, I was uh, I was a dumb kid when I went over. I was not 18. I was 22. The longer the war went on, the more pointless it became. And for those of us in the field, the guys that I were around were all draftees. And if if there was any anti-war feeling among us, this was 67, 68. Uh, it didn't get any more sophisticated than, this is bullshit. <laughs> you know, it, this, I'm sure that we radicalized more Vietnamese to the revolution than we saved. The Arvin government, the South Vietnamese government, was uh, 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 a bunch of really corrupt generals. Nothing moved in that country that the generals didn't get a piece of. And uh, 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 being in the inf well, I was in the, in the armored calf. You uh, you're stuck. Uh, there's no you can't like going after Cacciato. You can't just put down your rifle and walk to Paris for the peace talks. Uh, no, I mean you it, uh, you're stuck. You're in the field. You have to deal with the situation uh, the best way you know how. And when I got done with it and came home, I was radicalized right up to my eyeballs. Uh, I was so pissed off, I didn't know who to be pissed off at, so I was pissed off at everybody. And when I went back to school, this little bitty art college in Chicago, I was in class. I was one of the few uh, uh, veterans in the school, and uh, uh, there were a lot of folks who uh, really wanted to look down on me. And I said, "Look, pal, you know, I'm not taking any of your shit." You know. uh, all of my, all of the writing about the war, all, all three of the books came out of, a, a, a began with a, with an extraordinary. Uh, uh, almost inarticulate sense of uh, 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 betrayal. I mean, my government lied to me, and lied to me not just once, but 365 times, and then kept lying to me. 
And everybody knows that any enterprise, you, in the last bunch of years, and any enterprise begun with a lie is doomed to fail. I mean, even ordinary lies. You know, the, if, if you get lied to and something really important happens because of that and not good, if, if you lie to someone or, or tell a lie or act out a lie, people get hurt. That's what outraged me. I'm still pissed off about it. <laughs> and I don't care who knows. It's, it's, uh... Trust me, okay? The Vietnamese like us. They admire us. They admire our own revolution, which sometimes we forget about. They admire the, the, the Declaration of Independence like a lot of other peoples of the world. They admire the, the fact that, we, that you know, two dozen guys got together in Philadelphia a couple of hundred years ago and wrote this extraordinary document. You know, whether we are ever able to live up to it is another thing, but what a remarkable ideal. They, they like us. They... they, they um, the thing that I learned from them in 1990 was that the war's over. Uh, uh, it's over. The thing, that, the thing that we share is the war. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, Both men and women uh, of my generation uh, that I've met there, they're all veterans. Uh, and the war's over. They're much more interested in, in the things that, that you know, anybody's interested in as kids. Uh, my kids are grown and gone. Their kids are grown and gone. We talk about grandchildren. We talk about writing. We talk about uh, where to get the coldest beer. You know? uh, uh, we throw some money together and somebody runs down to the corner store and gets a bottle of really, I mean a big bottle, of uh, Jack Daniels. Turns out Bao Ning is partial to Jack Daniels, which of course goes down like Brillo. <laughs> but when Bao Ning, when you sit down with Bao Ning to drink, you have to represent your club. <laughs> no. and it's way too much. Uh, beautiful.